everyone, and welcome back to Storytime with Miss Tanya. Today, we are going to read a book called My Rotten Red-Headed Older Brother. And this is one of our books from our library, so um, let's check this one out. It is written by Patricia Polacco. All right. My brother and our mother and I all lived with my grandparents on their farm in Union City, Michigan. Now, my bab babushka, my grandmother, knew lots of things. She knew just how to tell a good story. She knew how to take to make ordinary things magical, and she knew how to make the best chocolate cake in Michigan. After she told my brother and me a grand tale from her homeland, we'd always ask, Booby, is that true? She'd answer, of course it's true, but it may not have happened. Then she laughed. See if you guys can see right okay there we go now i knew that she loved me all right but i couldn't quite understand how she could even like my older brother richard he had orange hair that was like wire he was covered in freckles and looked like a weasel with glasses <laughs> the one thing that my bubby didn't seem to know was how perfectly awful my brother really was mind you he was always nice whenever she was around us, but as soon as she'd leave, he would do something terrible to me and laugh. And there he is. There were so many things that I couldn't stand about him. The worst was that he was always telling me he could do just about everything better than I. Bet I can pick more blackberries than you can, he jeered at me one day. No, you can't. Can so. Cannot. Can, he whispered. Not, I said louder. Can. Can, he whispered so low that I could hardly hear him. Not, I screamed back. We both picked berries for the most uh, for most of the afternoon. Well, he upped and did it. He not only picked more berries than I, he set a record that wasn't even challenged for the next 10 years. You make me sick, Richard Barber, I yelled at him. Then he smiled that smile that only a rotten redheaded older brother could smile. I guess I would have to face it. He could run the fastest, climb the highest, throw the farthest, sit the longest, get the dirtiest, burp the loudest, and spit the farthest. He had no equal, certainly not me. And I'm four years older than you, always have been and always will be, he sneered. There had to be something, something I could do that he couldn't. Then an inspired thought comforted me, like a fresh breeze on a hot summer day. Oh, Richie, I co cooed as I stood next to the rhubarb bushes. Do you like rhubarb? No, he said. It's the sour stuff on the planet. Now I knew at long last that I had him. Bet I can eat more of this raw rhubarb than you can without getting the puckers, I challenged. I don't think so. I do. I don't, he said, narrowing his eyes. I do, I insisted. Don't, he hissed, looking smug. Do, I said furiously as I grabbed the first stalk and started chewing it almost down to the leaf.
When I couldn't get one more sour bite into my mouth, he was still eating with relish. I thought you said you don't like rhubarb, I said through pursed, pursed lips. I don't like it. I love it, he announced as he popped the last stalk into his mouth. I was so mad. I couldn't even feel how my belly was starting to ache. I can't stand you, Richard Barber. I double dog. Can't stand you, I screamed as I went into the house to be consoled by my grandmother. Yeah, and I'm four years older than you too, you little twerp. Always have been and always will be, he called after me. Then he laughed that rotten red-headed older brother laugh. That night at dinner, I could hardly eat. Have you been eating angry apples again, child? Bubby asked as she sliced me a huge wedge of rhubarb pie. I baked your favorite. Richard gave me one of his extra rotten, weasel-eyed, greeny, greeny tooth grins. At that time, my Bubby came and sat on the edge of, the be of my bed like she did every night. Look, a falling star, she said. We watched it streak across the sky. Then she spit twice between her fingers and gave her chest a loud slap. Why did you do that, Bubby? I asked. I was making a wish. Didn't you know that wishes on falling stars come true? At last, I knew how I was going to get back at my brother. For the longest time, I watched the dark sky until I saw a star shoot across the night. Then I spit between my two fingers and slapped my chest. It was done. My wish was to do something, anything, better than my brother. I'd show him. The next morning, all I could think about was my wish. I was thinking about it so hard I almost didn't notice the wagons and trucks pulling into the field down the road near Four Corners. A traveling carnival, my brother shouted as he ran towards me. They're setting up right here in our field. Bet I can eat more hot dogs than you can, he teased. He was already starting it, but this time I was going to do something so incredible that even he would have to sit up and take notice. I had a star wish. I'd show my rotten red-headed older brother all right. That night, I ran straight for the merry-go-round. We must have taken 50 turns on that carousel, but then my brother got off. I stayed on. I went around and around and around. I knew I could do this longer than you, I shouted to my brother, feeling proud, but just a bit diz dizzy. Trisha, I heard my brother Bubby called out. I heard my Bubby called out. Get off from that thing. It's time to go home. The last thing I remembered was stepping off from the platform. Next thing I knew, I woke up with Bubby sitting on the edge of my bed. Mom and Grandpa were there too. You gave us all a fright, Mama said. How do you feel? What, what happened, I asked. You fell, my rotten red-headed older brother announced with the biggest grin on his face. I don't know what we would have done, my Bubby said softly. Your brother carried you all the way home, and then he had to run to get Dr. Lee. You had to have stitches. I watched it all, he said excitedly. You fell off the merry-go-round right into some pop bottles, my grandpa added. You even passed out, my brother chirped. Looks like you finally did something special. It was from that exact moment that our relationship changed somehow. Thanks, Richie, I said to him. What's a big brother for anyway, he said, blushing. That night, we were all out in the yard. On hot Michigan nights, it was my family's custom to sleep outside where it was cool. Look at those stars, Bubby said quietly. 
Wishes are funny, aren't they, I said. Sometimes they come true differently than you think they will. That's why you have to be very careful what you wish for. It just may come true, Bubby said. Then she squeezed both of our hands. Hang on to the grass, she whispered. Why, Bub? My brother asked. Because if we don't, we might float up to the stars. Then she leaned over and kissed us both three times. I kiss your eyes and I hold both of your hearts in my good keeping. And this night, I thank God that I walk this earth with both of you. Amen. Then we all just lay on our blankets in the gentle summer night. I'll always be four years older than you, though, my brother whispered softly. Then he smiled. All of us held one another's hands, and then we all drifted off to sleep. El fin. That was a cute family story. Sil sibling rivalry. So, you guys, the ones that have brothers and sisters, do you guys fight like that? Or like, you know, tease each other? But in the end, you know that you love each other and you'll always be family, right? This was cute. I hope you guys enjoyed the story. And um, till next time, bye.